My name is Sergeant Jeff Scott. I'm a medical lab technologist at One Canadian Field Hospital in Petawawa, Ontario. I'm senior lab tech on site and I maintain uh, lines of operation prepping labs for deployment. My name is Petty Officer Second Class Dupuy. I'm deploying on Operation Impact in Iraq where I'll be serving in a Role 2 medical facility. The purpose of a Role 2 medical facility is to treat trauma patients mostly, and so it's going to be probably packed with adrenaline for us as uh, urgency matters. So the role of a medical lab technologist in Orbil, Iraq spans from the traditional lab tech in Canada to someone who is very much involved in patient care uh, with a presence in the resuscitation bay or emergency room. So we would routinely take blood from walk-in members to the point of providing trauma packs and running a walk-in blood bank. Logistically, our mandate is damage control resuscitation damage control surgery, meaning we physiologically have to repair someone so they can be medically evac to a higher echelon of care. So all operations require a pre-deployment phase. Rotation 8 members arrived in Petawawa at the beginning of September, uh, have gone through an extensive training a regimen of weapons training, cultural training, uh, environmental training, and hospital training. So today the glass hosts mark the end and the validation, so now they're ready to deploy. So the, the main purpose of the exercise for us is communication, because we don't have necessarily LIS to work with, where the results will be sent and pushed to the wards. We actually have to uh, be very vocal about it when, once uh, the lab results is out, you know, because it's pretty chaotic in there. And uh, knowing who to bring it to, who to talk to, is really what we want to get uh, figured out for us before we go. A lot of the scenarios and simulations that were tested during the validation exercise are based on real life events that previous rotations have gone through. These are to set up the current rotation for success so they can anticipate and know how to react to, so far, all possible emergencies. So being at one Canadian Field Hospital has afforded me the opportunity to deploy. And it's something that we train and it's something that we're very proud to do and hopefully make a difference. So for my experience in Roto Zero of Op Impact, we received all types of patients. We ended up receiving injuries relating from ladder falls to car accidents to gunshot wounds to combat related issues. So we showed up and we essentially had to build a hospital and find out where we should place things, our power requirements. So the lab that's currently in place now is run half on what we call North American power and half on host nation power. And that way, if any sort of failure happens, we at least have half of the lab running. In an austere environment like Northern Iraq, having an emergency resupply of blood is difficult to impossible. What we're asking is one of our coalition allies to take one of their air assets, a helicopter for instance, out of service so it's unable to medically evac anyone else to fly us blood products. This is difficult and could be up to three to six hours in our case. So we utilize the capability of the walking blood bank for two main reasons. One, logistics. Two, component therapy. The walking blood bank allows us to properly manage our blood supply and also ensure the hospital doesn't go black, meaning that we're always able to take patients. The most exciting part of these opportunities for me is the unknown. So you never know when you'll actually get to go. You don't know where you're gonna go. You don't know what you're gonna do. Um, and, and that keeps it interesting to me. 
These experiences don't come up every day and I think they're life-changing and something that we would look back on and be very proud of.